they, this time around, right, when, when I apply, I'm also not applying based on job satisfaction or anything at all that I imagine is going to be a fit, wonderful environment for me to work in because, you know, I feel as if the beggars can't be choosers. But there is a job opening that I saw on... Uh, on LinkedIn, it was LinkedIn, okay? I remember I said that I, I, I'm not gonna go on LinkedIn because get bored and just like all these multiple job places where you can apply. Well, thank God I went and I reignited my old LinkedIn and I, I looked for a job over there, uh, applied uh, for, for a job over there. When I clicked on it and I read the job description, I was like, oh my goodness, my heart, uh, it just, it reached, it yearned so much for that job to be um, mine uh, or for me to, you know, be called in this ecosystem. It's a form of, it's a mix of pro project coordination and project management. It's like a, a combo. It's a junior role. It should not be, I'm not junior. But I recognize that at some point I got to start somewhere, right? But there's a difference between being an administrator pushing paper and uh, I, the other day I made a joke about um, ordering digestive biscuits for some dude who imagines that's all that you can do or pay for power not pay for parking for but book parking that's a junior job that is a super entry level job coming fresh out of a matric type establishment a thing but then there is also a difference between a junior secretary for instance or a junior project manager or a junior product manager or a junior yeah a junior is not always as junior as junior can get if you know what i mean it's it's only junior in the sense that it's entry level for uh, that particular professional track but it is senior in comparison to um or, or rather it's intermediate in comparison to where it is that a person would be in their career at all right so i was drawn to this job because of the fact that it was it's a combination of project coordination and project uh, management right so essentially i would be running my own projects and enabling along a department in coordinating projects the thing that drew me to that opportunity was the fact that it was within the marketing and brand environment retail retail marketing and brand i've been wanting to get ahead back in i told you guys i, I did a video speaking before I got MTN when I was working close to marketing, I wanted to get into marketing and I was more interested in insights um, and the, the, the side of uh, marketing that was dealing with basically diagnostics and insights. I spoke about that, right? Um, but in order for me to ultimately end up there, you got to start somewhere type setup thing. I was never able to pierce into marketing back then because, you know, I lost my career before I could do anything valuable with myself. Uh, type establishment thing uh, back then. Yeah, well, this job is within the brand FMCG pharmaceuticals retail space within brand this particular um, job is within FMCG retail uh, retail FMCG brand in particular and they were looking for a project manager for that marketing department slash program uh, uh, not program coordinator what do you call this project coordinator so somebody that would be doing both functionalities reporting into listen to this right i'm not reporting into i would not be reporting into a project manager i would be reporting into a marketing manager a marketing manager a marketing manager would be the tenement of the person the girl or the guy that is running an entire marketing department they are running um uh value propositions they are running uh budget uh, proposals they are running insights they're running the whole nine like from the whole product life cycle product management business analysis of the whole marketing team it's basically like the general manager or the senior manager not even senior it's more at a general manager level over an entire marketing department i would be reporting into that human being so basically my responsibilities would be lofty uh i would not necessarily be doing things at an administrative level serving uh, middle management i would be doing things at a middle management level serving upper middle management and i was like whoa i want this why because it's a pierce into the marketing industry it is going to enable me to ultimately walk into the space that i want to enter and into i told you guys about management consulting in my other videos right it's a whole long journey you're gonna have to watch the, um those videos to understand where i'm trying to get it's, it's the perfect foot in the door foot in the door <laughs> I had a vision this afternoon of me, of a door closing, right? And me putting my foot literally in the middle so that the door does not close completely. And my foot was just like standing over there. And the Lord was telling me, Hora, this is your foot in the door of the industry that you've always wanted. Remember I told you guys that long ago I asked God for the perfect career. And I just could not get into it because, you know, all these things happen in my life. Uh, at some point, uh, I, 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 not at some point, sorry, but I, I sought his face to enable me to walk, sorry, to work the kind of job that I wanted. 
but I didn't know how to get in there um, type establishment thing and I didn't want to have to start from scratch back then I was frazzled and befuddled by the prospect of starting from scratch well this time around I'm, I'm content with taking a step back whereas before I wasn't and this year would be a step back in terms of job level but not too many steps back plus I would be reporting like I said into the marketing manager it's only a matter of time before I am one of his or her uh, what do you call this M managers underneath like uh, I need underneath them in over um, some one of her divisions departments and hopefully where it is that I can infiltrate is where it is that I'm trying to go to insights diagnostics analytics I will finally end up there and the wonderful thing about it is that it is within the f industries that I've always wanted to be in. I don't know how many times I tried to knock on the door of Tiger Brands back in the day and I couldn't get in. Coca-Cola. I've always wanted to work in food or uh, retail. Food and retail. Either FMCG or clothing. Okay? Type thing. Yeah. Like, or pharmaceuticals. Uh, food, retail. Basically, uh, sale. Like, um, co the commercial spaces where it is that, uh, that deal with consumer marketing right food pharmaceuticals and um retail so clothing textiles pharmaceuticals and food i've always wanted to work in any of those industries like any any of them i just wanted a foot in the door and i did not know how in the world to get in i was only ever made to be stuck in telecommunications banking finance all that jazz but i wanted consumer marketing client facing type jobs because i have a thing about people okay i have a people about insights about um uh, addressing their needs, tapping into what they need, what they want, figuring out what, what to do for people. I have a thing about people. And this here job is within the retail slash FMCG space. And I was like, I don't know which FMCGs they serve in particular or retail for that matter. But it is um, a firm that recruits for the pharmaceuticals slash retail slash um textiles industries yo yo i was uh, when i saw that job um on on linkedin my heart melted and uh, my heart uh, uh what do you not melted what do you call this um my heart was sore my heart burned my heart was broken because i was like what if they don't call me because i would do anything to get my one foot in the door i go in i click on that job i read the job responsibilities it's aligned to all my skills i have not only some experience in marketing but also project management so why wouldn't they call me? And then I, get, I explained, you know, and then I cover letter, etc. Why I've been unemployed all this time. I go, I click on it. They, it, it redirects me to some site, okay? I hate being redirected to sites. Y'all know how much that sucks, right? When you're applying for a job, you've already put your CV and done all the time for hours on end to upload your profile on this website. And then next thing, they move you over to another website where you have to put in the same details again. It's just, it's annoying. This one here um, was one of those where it is that you had to repopulate your CV on uh, another site and something told me, just do it, Garabo. Just do it, okay? So I, I repopulate my CV, uh, really just kind of unsure if anybody's gonna get back to me uh, type thing, but I only repopulated like the, the first job, the job that I had at MTN because before I went down and discovered that they had a term and condition that you had to click on there that said that I acknowledge that uh, this application will also be received with a criminal check and a credit check. Now, I don't have a criminal record, but I certainly do have a bad credit record. I don't have a criminal record, but I certainly do have a, a, a horrible credit record because I, I lost my job and I wasn't able to pay debts. I'm literally sitting on the credit bureau, so my heart got flattened. I was like, oh, they're going to do a credit check, find me on the credit bureau and be like, why we can't, this woman. So I only filled in one of my experiences, the last job I ever worked. And I uploaded the whole CV though, because uh, you know how they give you an option to upload CV. And then on top of that, just look at to fill out their um, uh, CV type thing. I did just one portion of it. My skills were already populated and whatnot. And even my education, I only put in a little bit. Like I didn't put in much. Um, and then I just applied. I, I applied. I, I did not finish the whole form because I still got they're gonna do a credit check but I'm on but I was so excited for it I even prayed I was like God it would be so great if I got this job it's the one I want like it's perfect it's absolutely perfect please give it to me only for me to see down below that oh they're gonna reject me for a credit check so I just like blah, blah, apply and then I went and I applied for other jobs throughout the day as it progressed etc um in the night while I'm busy doing my edits I get email and an email coming through on my cell phone device I check it and lo and behold they replied to me within an hour I did not know that they replied within an hour because my phone was not attached to the wi-fi and my gmail is not open on my pc okay it's only open on my cell phone uh I ended up opening it on my pc uh type establishment thing uh I need to go and pee guys okay 
Righto, so I'm good. I'm relieved. Not that you need to know all that extra information. Yeah. Mm. Yes, my Gmail. I was talking about how it is that my, my, my Gmail on my cell phone device is always open, but not so much on my PC because on my PC I'm always uploading content and it is slow uh, to death, like no man's business that PC, so I can't have too many tabs open at any given time. So I rely on um, checking my emails on my cell phone device, but when I'm back in that shack, I'm so far from the Wi-Fi router in the house that sometimes I don't... Um, so that sometimes it does not quite catch uh, from when I'm sitting on the bed type setup thing and every so often it'll catch and then I will suddenly get this flood of notifications from YouTube or this flood of notifications from, from Facebook, flood of notifications from TikTok, etc. That, that's when I know that my Wi-Fi uh, is, is caught on my cell phone, in which case I then quickly check my emails, all right? Well, last night, Wi-Fi did not catch until like 3 a.m. in the morning. It was just all dead the whole entire time. I didn't expect anybody to respond to me within like an hour of sending a job application. I expected that if they're going to respond, they're going to respond. Maybe after two 24 hours, largely ignore me. Perhaps maybe next week, Monday, because it's Friday today. Yesterday was Thursday when I was busy applying. So they're probably going to get back to me, if at all. Uh, so far, ain't nobody out responding to me. Nobody cares. And it's funny because um, I told this cousin that... Because um, um, uh, she, she's the one that... I told you guys that she um, wrote me a WhatsApp and was like, yeah, they liked you at the interview. We're going to discuss that. But maybe you should consider not uh, uploading certain stuff. Wait until the dotted line is signed. What a what a type establishment thing. And I'm like, you, like nobody's going to tell me what to upload on my you on my YouTube. That That's a completely different area of interest. Like, I feel infringed upon, you know, like, no, stop. Not in so many words, but I just made it clear that you don't get to tell me what to do on YouTube. Okay, yeah. Well, her reaction was to basically just kind of ghost me and rescind the offer without even telling me. Mm. But then I host, I had also told her over a voice note that I, this whole thing of you trying to get me a job has also inspired me to look for another job um, that is more fit or aligned to my skills, my gifts and my talents instead of uh, me, you know, sort of kind of taking the one that you thank god are trying to offer me type thing i was trying to be as cool as as, as um cordial as i possibly can but, but bottom line is i have these skills and uh, you know it would be great if i could perhaps maybe get uh, employed in a more fit for purpose industry it, you know more aligned for to what it is that i prefer to be in and also aligned to my skills like this you know something that's not as junior as what you're trying to put me in i essentially made it clear to her that i am going to be feverishly applying for jobs even if at all i end up working for you and i might not last where it is that you um are putting me because i realized that if you could be prepared to hear me and see me maybe somebody else out there is okay uh instead of getting back to me on some sorry no job offer not accepted and so like yeah like let a person know for crying out loud and like never not yeah like getting you know, rescinding Sorry, did not successfully interview, especially considering you are the one. Um, so yeah, eh? You offered me this thing, I didn't ask for it. I did a video the other day where I was lamenting about how it is that I'm not Zanka Kupam Yeah, ghosting. Fine. Do you? Okay? But I, I did say that it would be great if I were to be placed somewhere, maybe like marketing, something that's more aligned to what cre my creativity, the industry that I want to belong to alongside my skills set. Something more uh, aligned. Yeah, this individual then makes a decision to ghost to the living daylights out of me but i had made it clear that i am going to be applying right uh type thing that's the thing when when you've been sitting around for um in my particular case it's been a decade when you've been sitting around waiting for answered prayer for all that long sometimes your enemies will think that you are a joke to think that anybody's gonna listen to you i said um it, well when i was talking to her got voice note that I'm gonna apply and I'm gonna apply and I'm gonna apply, but hey, nobody listens to me. Nobody watches my content. And on top of that, uh, that's on YouTube. That when, when I was telling her, nobody listens to me anyway. So, um, like, ain't nobody need to be worried about what I put online. Not that I owe you any excuse or any reason, but no one listens to me anyway. But also, over and above it, when I apply for jobs, no one calls me. I've been doing it for years. Uh, I've been applying and applying and applying to no avail. Chances are nobody's gonna call me. So, also, rest assured, chances are I'll end up working for you for months on end with nothing given concerning my cv and in terms of what you imagine is a concern that i've uploaded on youtube nobody watches me except for like these horrific eyes people that are out here thoroughly trying to wreak havoc in my life so papa relax blow my eh muntu one ghost one tell you she'll get back to me nothing watula fine whatever it is leaning on the fact that 10 years has come and gone and nobody's called me 
for jobs that I have that have been appropriate for me. Ten years have come and gone. I have not gotten the right job. Ten years have come and gone. Even my YouTube channel is going nowhere. That's the thing. They lean on the fact that who fit that ten years, twenty years, fifteen, seven, five, however long you've been waiting for as a child of the living God, and they think that nothing is coming. They think that no one is coming. They think that because 10 years have progressed, another 10 is going to come and go. Another 10 is going to come and go. So they lean on the fact that good who lead. But they don't know that at the time when they're taking that for granted, the circumstance, that's when God is helping you along. So the humiliation that is facing your enemies, the body of Christ, is the fact that at the cusp of your breakthrough, they will have been at the height of their insanity and they will have done something be be beforehand to spite you. They will have done something to spite you, trusting that you're going to be sitting at home still gathering dust a year later, two years later, three years later. They will mock you, trusting that this is not going to give. And then it gives. Here it is that ever since that conversation, it's been like two, two and a half weeks since I spoke to her. I told her that I'll let her know if a job interview comes through. But that was only based on whether or, or on her own deadline date as to when she'll get back to me. She literally said she's going to wait two weeks all the way up until the 1st of September. Now it's way past the 1st of September, so I don't owe her an explanation. I don't owe her, oh, by the way, I got a job, because she's made it clear that I don't care that you have one or not, I'm not giving you one. She's already made it clear by simply just ghosting me. Yeah, very well. Okay, so I don't need to let her know. But what she will do is find out nonetheless. How? Because I'm being surveilled. I'm being watched, I get it, on YouTube. I'm being followed by people that are out here in broad daylight, thoroughly humiliating themselves by being overtly jealous in a way that is embarrassing because what are you going to say, cousin? Now that Garawa has gotten a job anyway, even though you ghosted her, you offer a woman that has been suffering for 10 years a job and then you just ghost her? <laughs> and then she gets one anyway. I'm sorry, you have burned a bridge. You have destroyed a relationship. You have made yourself look so dumb that you can never look me in the face ever again. You will never be able to keep a straight face again. You've just made yourself like the rest of my enemies that have had it in for me so dirty and so bad that they in my face display that they don't want me to be okay in life. And they have all trusted in the fact that I'm not going to get out of this. But then I do. Here it is that two weeks later, two and a half weeks from that date, after I had given up, but then I went back to apply again because God told me, Hamba, oh, you apply. I got to don't just sit at thing. I applied for this job that I just explained right now uh, within the marketing space, within FMCG, retail, textiles, etc. Mm. I apply for it because I like the industry. I like what I'm going to be doing. If at all, I get to do it. But I have no hope. I have no faith that they're going to call me. I I'm just applying because like I that job, I wish they would call me. All the other jobs that I've been applying for, I'm just applying because I want a job. I want a job. That's it. All the rest of them that I'm applying for, I'm applying because I need a job, I need a salary, I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of being harassed by filthy men, I'm exhausted with, with the whole disrepute narrative and my name being reviled right through the mud and me being bullied by people and me being dictated to what I need to do with my life, I'm tired of that. So basically a salary, a job, some kind of financial stability is going to make it easier for me to have to endure all the insanity of my enemies. All the insanity of my enemies is going to be eradicated if I get a job. That's why I'm out here working to the nail to get a job. Okay, but I'm not pedantic as to the color of the job, the nuances of it, the edges, if they're laying flat, whether or not it's wearing a pink top, whether or not it's wearing heels or pumps. I don't care about the look and feel. I'm just interested in it at all. I just want to work. I'm not about to like literally returning to the good old fashioned days of working a rote, mundane, boring, no-brainer job that you can't stand, but hey, it pays the bills. Just going through the modes, all these people on the planet, working 9 to 5 just to stay alive, working 9 to 5 just to stay alive. You know how Beyonce sings that song? Just working 9 to 5 to stay alive. Working 9 to 5 to avoid licentious, rape-fueled men. Working 9 to 5 just to get out from harassment by bad, bad girls. Working a 9 to 5 from Jeffella just to escape who sang while members of the occult yeah just just to stay alive i'm out here being a person on the planet working nine and five just to stay i've, I've done my time in those dangaris and those orange those prison rolls dangaris those prison dangaris those prison overalls i've worn them i've worn orange i've worn stripes the, the zebra I, i've worn uh blue whatever might be the prison attire i've worn it i've worn it y'all know the prison job right the prison job where you just rock up and just fell out to collect a paycheck at the end of every single month got the ozonda everything alarm you you bash it with your fist it's a hammer when it wakes you up in the morning you dry you you literally just stand under the shower and just fell out for 
15 minutes before you actually start to bath. The way of Boruan ka tengkit about you have to go there. Your car, when you get in there, it's a yawn, it's a drag. And then you gotta idle in traffic for all of those, like, minutes on the N1 highway. Ka bumpa to bumpa. And then coffee sing morning, morning, morning. Hi, ah, morning, morning. Coffee shop as you are queuing. Just to go and get coffee or sandwich And then you sit at your desk And you just look at your emails And you look at your day ahead And it's just a drag You keep looking at the watch Or if cunning And then at the end of the day You also drag your body out of the office Into the car Yet again bumper to bumper traffic And when you get home You plonk on your bed With your face dig dug in your pillowcase Only for you to wake up And force yourself to make dinner Because you can't eat takeout Every single night I've been through those on those orange overalls. I've worn those silver overalls. I've worn those um, sort of thing, pedestrian crossing zebra overalls, the black and white. Taco Dangan. I like Papa. I have worked a prison job. I have worked prison jobs. I have worked prison jobs for I, most of my career were prison jobs. The job at MT and the last one that I had, at the end of it, I was in ironically the job that I lost, um, the, the 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 last last job that that cost me so much envy that I became Daniel in the lion's den. I was actually quite uh, satisfied in it, but even as a project manager, I was somewhat of a prisoner, but not nearly as much of a prisoner as I was when I was in the call centers, especially the call centers when I was a program coordinator at MTN. I was an orange, okay, and it was not the new black. I was out here wearing dangaris overalls to work, just. Going through the moats because I had to pay a car. Going through the moats because I had to pay my fees. Going through the moats because I'm unruly somewhere else. This is a means to an end. Um, I've got one day in the future, I'll have job satisfaction. I promise. But for now, I'm, I'm in the sun and it's sultry and uh, I'm, I'm, there's a mirage in this desert and it looks like a, a, a glass of water in the near distance and then only to happen upon it and realize it's a rock. Aguna manzi, it's dry. Get Danyani. Y'all know that Danyani job. I was prepared to go back to Danyani. Even though I prayed to the Lord to get me out of Danyani. I did not want to wear orange as the new black. I did not want to wear stripes. I did not want that. And I saw the Lord's face long ago. But I've been unemployed for 10 years. You don't get to choose. I've been applying to be an inmate on social media. Not social media. What do you call this? On my social media. If I had a YouTube channel, that would be the perfect job. Frankly. Mm. That was monetized but i can't do that because i'm blocked i'm shadow banned the global elites don't want anything to do with my voice so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm never ever gonna have freedom on youtube right whatever but it is possible for me to work in corporate and be happy and have job satisfaction i have communicated that to you be before as to what would have been the ideal job for me right but when am i ever gonna get it after 10 years of being dry in my curriculum vita of there being nothing going on in my in my life uh, in, in a lot of the corporate space that is given that gives me even an iota of jab of job satisfaction even an inkling just as a pinch of job satisfaction that's not coming it's not coming i'm also going to bash like a hammer my alarm yet again and drag my body through comfort through the day through traffic through everything and just merely exist and then go back home and then like, dig my face into a pillow at the end of the day yeah only to force myself to cook dinner because like i said can't eat takeaway every single night so over and above having had a really rough day because that's just the nature of the of these nine to five jobs right yeah i was prepared i was applying for prison I was applying for in to become an inmate. Yeah, I was applying to become an inmate like like many of y'all. Yeah, I was applying to become an inmate like Papa. Yeah, apply, 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 apply. And then when I applied to become an inmate, guys, my heart bleeds because I'm like, but I should not be doing this like proper there comes a time in a person's career when they stop being inmates because they finally have broken through into the place where they want to be. Why am I still an inmate? Yeah, God blocked it. I was gonna be an inmate working for that cousin of mine and God blocked it and I was going to be an inmate uh, working any other of these jobs that I've been applying for online for the sake of it so you can understand how much God really rewards you and you will remember all of your benefits yeah I was going to be an inmate do you understand but then there came a job uh, online advertised that smashed uh, a, a lot of my skills where it looked as if though I'm very potential, I'm not going to be an inmate. So this time around, I was applying for a job that I really wanted. I really wanted it. This one, when I was look, reading the description, I was like, oh my goodness, I'd be happy here. I'd have job satisfaction. It would not matter what they're paying me. Chances are, it's not nearly 
um, as much as what it is that I used to earn before, but it's about job satisfaction. I've told you guys before about a job that I used to have back in the day where I was a claims consultant for Telesure. It was an entry-level job. I was at the call center. I was a claims consultant and I loved it. So even though the salary was low, I had job satisfaction because it was just, a, it, it was appealing to my uh, interest, to my heart. Yeah. Money is not a motivator. I can't say that enough. This here, I don't even know what the salary is for this job. There was no range, okay? Communicated. But all I know is that it's a mix of program code, project coordination, and project management. So it cannot be lower than a certain amount. Uh, type establishment thing. Yeah, it's a it's a junior position, an entry entry level position for that kind of job. You you can't really truly be junior in the sense of just merely starting scraping through in a career if you're a project manager. You're just junior in project management. Okay, yeah. That's what this job is, even though I'm not junior at all, but I've had a 10-year gap in my CV, so I gotta start somewhere. Type establishment thing, and for the first time, I read the, 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 the core competencies, the key KPIs of this job, and I'm like, whoa, this, this I'm gonna soar. I, I'm gonna be happy, Lana. I am going to be happy. This is going to give, okay? This is going to give. Type establishment thing. I apply for it, and then I see down below that they're gonna do a credit check and probably, like, toss me. I don't finish the whole application. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I need to just keep on applying for prison, right? I need to keep on applying to be an inmate in some Tanyani. I leave it alone. They responded within an hour, but I did not get it within an hour. I only got it at 3 a.m. in the morning, their response, okay? Because that's when the Wi-Fi caught. Um, and I started getting a flood of notifications from social media, following which I then went to Gmail and I checked my emails to see if anything came through. And I had two emails from that company, all right, from that place for having applied for that position. The first email that came through said, please complete your CV, right? The first one that said, yeah, the first one that came through said, please complete the information uh, on your CV. Chance, I get it, I attached my, I get it, I attached my, what do you call this, my, my, my actual PDF CV that I attached, but I did not finish filling out their forms. I only put in portion, a portion of my experience. I also did not put in my qualifications, the documentation that they need, because I was like, what's the point? How about I'm But I'm just going to apply just in case. Just in case. I sent the application and I was asked, I was actually thinking of just letting it go when I saw the credit check. But I was like, ah, just apply. It's not going to hurt. Just throw it in the in the wilderness. Cast your bread upon many waters and after cast your bread upon the waters and after many days, many days, it'll come back to you. I cast my bread uh, uh, upon the waters. I applied and within a couple, within an, uh, an hour, the first lady responds on some, please finish your CV. Please finish your CV. Uh, please, please complete the, the 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 forms um on our site right i i of course would have immediately responded to that if i'd seen it immediately but of course it would be hours before and then about 45 minutes later i then get an email from what i would imagine is like an administrator from there that probably this lady was like please follow up with this candidate um i've already told her to fill out her cv i've already told her to, to to complete the form but she's not getting back to me so please follow up and so i get another email from the same company but a different lady right and this lady is like we are interested in your application kindly finish up uh, filling up the the cv on the portal and also please do these assessments because you've been shortlisted for um at least that you you have you have been shortlisted for assessments uh, type thing like you know numeracy literacy um what do you call this like thought process and what have you but first you got to finish your cv and then only do these it was when i saw these two emails from these two ladies i was like whoa <laughs> they responded <laughs> somebody responded i said like it was not an automatic email generated response on some we have received your application uh we will deeply consider it consider yourself unsuccessful if after three days we haven't replied or we will see what we do no it wasn't an auto generated email it was from these people that work there and the first one was telling me please finish your cv didn't respond on time the second was fill out these assessments but also please finish your cv yo guys at 3 a.m that's when i see these responses right uh, chances are they responded to me based on my attached CV. So the information on their website was insufficient, but they probably opened my PDF CV, uh, saw it, and then were like, uh, I will take it. I will take it. Well, like, yeah, contact this chick. We want to see her. <laughs> when I saw that those responses, like, I jumped. 
I was busy uploading content. I was listening to something by James Caddis on YouTube. I was listening to like some stuff that I think it was either James Caddis and Tom Hughes or Ellie, Bex, uh, Ellie Beth Stuckey talking about some mass shooting in the US and whatnot. Um, basically, I was listening to stuff on YouTube. Okay. Uh, when I was, I jumped, I paused everything. I paused everything. And I was like, somebody responded. And as soon as I jumped up out of bed, God said, Liberty Life. He welled it up in my bones and said, Liberty Life. Like the Holy Spirit said, Liberty Life. I immediately, immediately, I immediately, sorry, knew what he was saying. Liberty Life is the one job or one organization that contacted me, responded to me when nobody else did back in the day. And it, from the very beginning of them responding to my application all the way to the end worked out it worked out i got the job even though it was the only one that interviewed me i went i wanted more options i wanted to have a, a, um, options on my plate i didn't have many options just that one and i was panicked because nobody else was calling me nothing else was happening but it gave it gave it gave it became the one thing that broke me out of a grain of poverty that was threatening to keep me in the gassy for the rest of my days looking like a loser liberty life was my life boy and my olive branch back in the day and god said that this here upper uh, job is liberty life literally he said he welded up he bubbled it in my spirit when i jumped up and saw these emails he said liberty life i was like yo are you telling me that this is my job and when i went and i read the um, when i went back into their website i realized because again i had applied for so many opportunities throughout the day um yeah i realized that it was the one that i half-heartedly did and uh, however it was the one that i wanted desperately the one that i clicked on in linkedin and then it redirected me i was like this is the one that i wanted this is the one that i wanted this is the one that i wanted but then i gave up because they said they're gonna do a credit check and forget about me hey yo guys it was three i was getting about ready to lie down because you know i'm on my period i've got the, the, this um these pains i i've got a little bit of a headache i'm under demonic attack i was like nyolala mina gunini nyolala gorobal gorobal I am going to sleep early. It's early. 3 a.m. for me is early. Sometimes I can be awake until 5, 6 a.m. Can take care of bed, right? But when I saw that, Ashem, energy, Katsoha, I, CPR, clear. I came back, Katsoha, I was like, I don't care how long it takes for me to finish uploading the CV on the la uh, on the machine. And I also don't care how long it takes for me to do these assessments. Korea before before Joba, I'm not about to go and drag my feet down his bicycle. It's like I had one foot in the door. I was not about to let that opportunity slide right over my head. So what did I do? I sat up. Do you understand? What did I do? I sat up. Mm? I sat up and I filled out the application online. Not the application. What do you call this? The CV girl fair. Like I filled it out to 100%. I uploaded all of my forms, my documentation. So that's the first thing that I did. I finished the application process that I did not first do. And I was like, God, if this is Liberty Life, it means that you're going to cause them to forget about the fact that my credit rating is shocking. It's horrific. And indeed, they ought to forget about it because it's the Labor Relations Act. No longer can you discriminate against a person based on their credit rating because how are they going to pay off their debts if you don't give them a job? Like, that's a thing. It's been a law for a minute but some companies check for it anyway especially the financial services industry for understandable reasons but this is not the financial services industry like i told you it's fmcg so leave me alone okay just give me a job so that i can fix my credit situation plus i've been unemployed for 10 years please understand please understand i trust that the, that the lord is going to soften their hearts concerning that it's not like i come from prison i don't have a criminal record but i certainly do have a credit record okay yeah type establishment thing cool beans and uh bananas my battery is busy getting depleted here even though i've got a power bank on so the sooner i get this message out there the better mm, yeah that's what's good so I tell myself that if God has told me this is liberty life, it means they, they are going to at some point eventually ignore that I'm on the credit bureau. They're going to ignore it. They're going to ignore it. They're going to give me a chance anyway. They're going to love me like a fat kid loves cake and, 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 and totally give me a shot, even though I'm on the credit bureau. And my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom also once got a job and that was even before the labor relations act adjusted the law okay uh, they gave her a job even though she was on the credit bureau because the people who interviewed her liked her so much and they understood that but like how is anybody supposed to fix their credit rate situation and pay off their debt when they don't have a job so they gave her a job in spite of her credit record but all along she had been struggling to get a job because of it like she would apply they would interview her and the credit check would come back and they would be like sorry ma'am sorry ma'am sorry ma'am but the one company if anything it was the very company that she ended up working for um eventually forever 
on into the future Kijima. She stayed there for like the rest of her career. Uh, Tap establishment thing, they gave her a chance in spite of a bad critic check. So looks like I guess I'm following in my mom's footsteps. Like the exact same things that she went through, I'm going through them. Like generational curses like Papa, you will know, okay? Type thing. Anyway, whatever. Mm, Tap establishment thing. Very well, cool. And very bean beans and uh, a a an entire bananas. Mm. I sit up straight in bed. I fill out the rest, right? And then I start to do the assessments. Um, from Honatre AMU. Yo, guys, like this lady is like, they're gonna take you an hour to do, um, in total girlfriend, that's all. And I'm thinking, okay, an hour's nothing. I, they didn't take me an hour. I, our hour, our shmawa. They did not take me an hour. The, the first one was a literacy. Uh, assessment the first one was a literacy assessment like grammar and all that jazz that that was quick okay i was able to go through that one quickly and then the second one was a numeracy one i also went through it relatively quickly but not as quickly as the literacy one because it, it involved calculations and everything i even went to go and take out a calculator but like my financial calculator yakovitz uh it's really high my electricity I should have known better. It's been sitting more top on for like years. So I had to use the one on the computer. Yeah, the, 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 the literacy one and the numeracy one went swimmingly, right? Eh, the last one. It was thought. Like thought. Thought what what? Did she been there for like clubs and, um, you know, hearts, queens? Basically, the shapes that you find on cards, like playing cards. You just have to like go and figure all that out so they can figure out your thought process and how that works. And the first couple were okay. The rest of them, because I was as tired as I was and my brain was a bit, was essentially unraveling like thread. Yar, but it, it, it took me so long to find the patterns. To find the patterns. I sat inside that one assessment, Illy one, for like an hour and a half. I don't even know if they're gonna like mark me down on that, but there was no time. What do you call this? Uh, calculate. There was no time limit. You could do it for how, over however long you want to, but it took me like an hour and a half just to do that one. And by the time I went to bed at like half past eight in the morning, I was so zonked and out of it and feeling so sad because why did this thing take me so long? Why am I not able to figure out basic things like patterns? But the reason why I was struggling with that um, assessment was because of the fact that I was tired, right? And I was pushing through it anyway because, hey guys, my one foot in the door, I'm not about to let it go. I'm not going to rest over 24 hours and then wait to do the assessment only later I'm not scatty. I need a job so I wrote it out I did it and I finished it I know I can't really tell you how well I did or lack thereof I'm still waiting for a response I eventually stepped out like half past 80 away at thing in the morning and when I woke up there was no response um why would there be I had just finished the assessment right Angazi. But my heart was sad on some but because in the um, email they said that they're gonna get back to, to me they said that they're gonna get back to me shortly after I I do those assay assessments. They didn't. I I by before eight a.m. in the morning, right? I I had already published and given them the assessments. I was expecting them to call me Lanza Gerovensi or wake up to an email, and it was just dead. It was quiet, and I was like, oh, oh it's not gonna give. Plus, I had a whole plethora of nightmares, essentially threatening me that I'm not gonna get the job. I'm not gonna get the job so i was just like, basically dragging my body through the mud on some ah ah i did an assessment for half an hour getting for 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 uh, like two and a half hours getting what's the exam jefela for mahala online hoping to get a job um only for nothing only for nothing to give i wrote an exam i, I really wanted that job but if it doesn't come through i'm gonna be very sad but it's okay at least there was a hint or at least people are willing to listen to me at least there are some companies that are prepared to call me even though there's a 10-year gap in my cv i've proven a concept i just need to keep pushing and striving i just need to keep pushing and striving however as i've been walking through this, these streets walking up and down um all the day long god has been saying perpetually on a loop without a ceasing liberty life liberty life throughout the time when i was doing the assessment ne, he was giving me images flash visions in my mind of the day when we went to liberty life to do the whole thing yeah go liberty we went on site right to do psychometric to do numeracy and to do shapes like uh, spatial reasoning that, that that's the one yeah thought right where they they put like shapes there to see how you reason spatially type thing mm. we did that over an entire day 
Over a day? Why did they say that it's going to take an hour? Anyway, whatever. It was like over an entire day. We did various exercises um, in groups and then sometimes as individuals. And then we went home and then a week later, two and a half, whatever, weeks later, they didn't let us know. You've been shortlisted, Karabo. What about a fish paste, etc. During the time when I was doing those tests online, the Lord kept on reverberating the flash vision of Liberty Life during the day, on the day when we went to go and do the tests. Um... Yeah, it's a psychometric and whatnot. Mm. Over and over. He's basically telling me, Karabo, Uskataba, give Friday, Gajeko. They didn't call me, right? It's quiet. But the Lord was like basically confirming to me last night that even though all the other jobs that you applied for are not responding to you, don't faint in your heart because this is it. This is it. I have not gotten more confirmation about anything in this entire time but other than this time around. Like the confirmation is so yawning it's so loud it's so ostentatious it's so glaring like the flash that the taga taga hazards just going in my ear are so voluminous concerning this particular job opportunity that i was tempted to just sit on it and wait for them to call me on monday or tuesday next week it's friday right now so it's gonna be quiet for two days monday or tuesday or whatever or whenever it is that they get back to me only then to share the story but you see we walk by faith and not by sight I am here to let you guys know. That's why I keep being like I go. That's why I sang and I'm so happy. I don't have a job yet. I haven't gone for an interview. I haven't even been called in for uh, either an online interview or a face-to-face -face interview or whatever. And yet, I have been told by Jesus Christ of Nazareth that that is my job. I have a job. I might not yet have been called, but that's it. I am going to be working as a project coordinator slash project manager. I am going to be working as a project coordinator slash project manager for a retail, for a brand team, some within marketing, let's just say within marketing, servicing, retail industries, uh, FMCG and uh, yeah, well retail, that was that is within textiles and say FMCG and retail, pharmaceuticals too. Yes, I did make mention of pharmaceuticals. That's what this firm basically is servicing. And the Lord has made it clear that they're going to have no regard at all, or at least they're going to shove it to the side for the fact that i do not my, my credit rate, rating sorry is as horrific as it is my credit record is is giving cadaver and rip as it is this is my one shot look i'm not gonna stop applying because me i'm scared all around plus you know faith i'm um, what is it thomas i'm like doubting thomas at this particular juncture i'm doubtful and so because i'm doubtful i'm gonna keep applying so that i can you know um hedge um hitch like you know not put all my eggs in one basket but this is my job and i don't know when i'm gonna start working but i'm gonna start working it so the very thing that i did in communicating to you guys after my cousin allegedly apparently gave me a job that even before signing on the dotted line it was a done deal because she told me that it was a done deal yeah this time around i'm doing that exact same thing the same uh, basically the same thing that my cousin called a mistake don't tell people before you write on the dotted line Wait until you get the job first, type thing. Yeah, to basically say that if at all the Lord has spoken, you get to prophesy in advance. And when it comes to pass, then you are not to be feared. Sorry, you are to be feared. Sorry, because then on that day you display that you are a true prophet type establishment thing. You get to speak in advance that the glory of God may be realized. That the glory of God may be respected and adored and kissed when it comes to pass. The Lord told me, Kim Oli, I've gotten it. I am the candidate that has successfully interviewed for that in advance. Has it given me that job? Enough for me to rock up here and say, I got a job. I have not yet been interviewed. Nobody has promised me that job. Unlike with my cousin who rescinded it later. No one has promised it to me. No one has even called me for an interview. No one has agreed. Presently, there are multiple candidates vying for the same job. They are all writing online assessments. And they are, some of them going to get called for an interview, be it remotely, virtually, or on site at the premises where it is that they um, have a, a company running. However, I'm going to be the one to get that job. It's one opening. They're not looking for many people. It's one opening. And according to Jesus Christ, it's mine. That is the job that God has set apart for me to reignite my career in. And it is within the field that I asked him to move me into back in the day. And I am coming here by faith to let you guys know that I got a job. I got work. I got work to do. I got a job, baby. I got a job. Mm. And it's funny because on the day after writing the psychometric test, right? Remember I told you guys that I need to get a job quickly before my mom acts a fool on me. Yeah. After writing those tests online, 
she asked me only today what happened with that opportunity with the cousin lady i was like i'm full now rest assured i'm looking for something else my bunny king wants to test it online she was like i know as long as you're looking for something else you're cool in other words i have stayed my mom's irritation anger and vibrancy of affliction by just letting her know relax bloma something else could come no one understand that when, not so much if, when I get this job, not only am I going to be more fitly placed in terms of my skills, I'm practically a, a project manager again, all right, in this job, but the money is going to be way more. It cannot not be because this is not an admin, an, an admin job. It is a coordination job. It's a monitoring and control job. It is a overseeing job. It is a project management job just within a junior role. So there's no way that I'm going, like the money that they were going to give me, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because then you're going to be able to more or less gauge what I'm going to be earning. Ain't nobody need to know any such information as that. I'm not about to share it. But bottom line is I'm probably going to be getting on top of the money that my cousin was willing to give me probably an additional 10 to 15,000 rands. I'm probably going to get an additional 10 to 15,000 rands on top of the original. So basically a lot more than what she was trying to give me and more fit for purpose with, of course, job satisfaction guaranteed job satisfaction and as for when i start working i don't know but that's what god did for me here it is that somebody pulled the rug from underneath my feet um somebody gave me something and then took it away and then trusted that nobody's gonna come through for me only for them to get humiliated a mere two weeks to a month later where it is that i get a job interview for a more fit for purpose job and somebody that is a complete stranger that don't know me from a bar of soap makes a decision to give me a job that is aligned to my skills showing just what the wicked are prepared to do to derail you they are prepared to make you settle in the season of your self-doubt such that you will literally take half a salary than what it is that you would have taken if you had just waited on god five more minutes if you had just trusted the lord you would have entered into something so much better god knows where you're supposed to be and what you can do and there are people out here in these streets that are prepared to acknowledge you for the skills that you have but there will be others that will be trying to put you in your place in your place by making you work some silly admin job despite being extremely skilled they will try to put you in your place by refusing to acknowledge something worth the while for them to take in their stride because because they're actively trying to handle you when you don't need handling. They're actively trying to make you get over yourself when there is no such getting over yourself that you need to do. When I started recording this video, I spoke about how it is that the wicked by as a keeper, like it's wapi, they expose themselves. When you're so jealous of a person that you will outwardly sabotage them to a point of ghosting them after offering them a job. Like that kind of stuff. This cousin is not the only one that's done this kind of stuff to me. It's a plethora of other people on the left and on the right of me who have in broad daylight literally displayed a jealousy that is so heinous that it is observable by all. Observable by all. And yet had no care that people see. Why? Because they trust you're not going to be okay. And then you become okay. I don't know when I'm going to get this job. Do you understand? Bottom line is I'm getting it. And I will only ever keep on coming to confirm what it is that I'm saying. That that's my job. Guys, they called me for an interview. I will come and I will report it. Guys, I, I they called me for a second interview. I will then report it. Guys, I'm starting on the 1st of October. Then you're going to know that God has always had my back. And those that tried to humiliate me by taking away a job I didn't, I didn't even want in the first place will rather be the ones that are in and of themselves humiliated. The wicked always speaks too soon. Like Penina, they always mock Hannah too soon. They always speak too fast. And I am trying to disenfranchise or disincentivize the wicked from carrying on in this fashion. Like stop envying so horrifically that you will put yourself in a position to in the future be humiliated. Stop embarrassing yourselves, guys. Like when God comes through for your victims. And the sad thing about witchcraft is that because you think it's this means of controlling everything and everyone on the left and on the right of you, that, that no one can catch you even upon doing it. You feel as if so far as you can just keep on recasting spells on people. You can keep on re-mocking them. Just mocking and mocking and mocking until one day God gives them breakthrough and you will wonder, but why have my spells not worked? Your spells never worked. It's just that for a season, your victim was being tested by God. But then when they get out of the test, they're in breakthrough. And their breakthrough is going to be obvious to you and everyone around. But it is also going to come at the humiliation of those who literally sat back and said, let's see what God does for you. And then God bah, gives them a job. 
Não sei aquele biscuit tá lá como um rau. Quem sei que order the, digest the digestive biscuit for what you was saying, appreciating. I was going to have my enemies look at me on some her. Who did you think you are? Except I never ever was trying to gloat. I was always trying to reach them for Christ. But when a person is jealous, they don't see things that way. They do not see things that way. All they see is somebody gloating all their goodness. They can't stand godliness. So in concluding this message, in sealing it, because now I'm, I'm thoroughly sitting on... Sorry. 4% battery power. And it's running out real fast and furious. So I'm going to close this message very soon. What I'm trying to get at right now is do not be scared of the wicked when they mock and jeer at you. Do not also be scared when there's a tumbleweed rolling around, when you keep on applying for jobs or whatever might be the thing you're seeking the Lord's face for. Do not be scared. All that is needed for you to be okay is the one opportunity. And all that is needed for you to be okay is the, the one opportunity, yes, but also your trust in the fact that there's no way that God has forsaken you. In the run-up to, you will be mocked, you will be jeered, and people are going to diss you in observably sabotage ways. Like, it's going to be obvious that Lomundu Utkwalenya sabotage unomona. And it's going to hurt during the season of you not yet having what you want. But literally in like two seconds from the date of their mocking of you, you will suddenly walk in breakthrough. A more skills appropriate job will be awarded you. You may have, like me, a rusted general disposition apparently with a 10 year gap in your CV with nobody at your calling you because I mean, who calls a person who hasn't been employed for 10 years? Someone that God has set apart from eternity past to call you at the opportune time. Let's go, Tava. But as for the wicked, as for the jealous, as for the ridiculous, this is what I have got to say to you, ridiculous men and women. It can't be easy to perpetually keep on getting humiliated like this. I hope that this is a strong lesson, that God is not so much intending to embarrass you as he is trying to rescue you, but you will meet with embarrassment when you try to disprove God by humiliating his saint. God will rather prepare her or his table in front of you and you will be embarrassed by it. like the whole of the planet is going to look at you on some how in the world are you such a saboteur e obvious ganga ga girl right in front of tina song we are watching you we are watching you like as an otv you will never recover from that so those of you who have jealousies in your hearts we all have them i am encouraging you to not act on them Exercise self-control, seek the Lord's face, wear Holy Spirit protection that you might put to death the deeds of the body so that you will not in the climate of the person that you envy's season of sorrow literally outwardly sabotage them in ways that are observable only for you to be embarrassed later. Don't let yourselves be ushazologu. Don't let yourselves be the thing on the side of the street. Do not let yourselves be the person that Everybody's wagging their heads at on some hey, I know brave girl and how am I tell or how Like you don't want people saying you are you're shameless. You don't want people looking at you like you're shameless. Slapping you with because this world will judge the living dead out of you. They will scan you up and down on some umonongaga. Sure. Umonongaga. Sure. Because you will have been so obvious. You will have been so obvious. So obvious. To pull the rug from underneath a person's feet such that again. This cousin is not going to be able to come to my mom's yard again without having to wear some hard knock, concealing, thieving paraphernalia. She would have to wear like, you know, a ballot lava. Cover the face with a ballot lava or something. Only then can she walk much other thing. Like, I, like my, my cousin, the one that's my former best friend, she can't easily come much other thing because of her broad daylight, broad daylight jealousy that caused her to sabotage me in a way that is observable so this one has has uh, he has basically joined that camp she has not joined the camp of people but that struggled to come to my mom's house and look my mom in the eye and also me and anyone else that lives in Mumuchagate because of the fact that they were backstabbers mahering ab ab amol like costrating like costrating down the road mupela yield sign costrating backstabbing yeah, you put yourself in a position to not be able to show your face anymore around some people. What is the point of all that? I'm calling everybody to repentance, okay? Including those who sabotaged me in this fashion. I'm about to walk into a job any minute now. Whether or not you want to believe it, bottom line, okay, my content is behind by several weeks. Two to three weeks. 
So by the time I share this video, chances are I'll already be working. Okay? Chances I'll already be working. Some, I even said that there's certain videos I'm not going to allow myself to put online unless I'm employed. So this video is only going to go up once I'm employed. And the videos in the future are going to confirm that I've got the job that I said God was giving me. But it, even if I had shared this video in advance, bottom line is to go out of your way to bewitch a person to make sure that the promises of God don't land in their lives is to put yourself in harm's way. Is to put yourself in hot water. Is to put yourself in humiliation's track. And is to make yourself look really nasty. It's not worth it. It is not worth it. You guys, you can either choose to believe me or not. But I've lived my life in front of you. For the very purpose of showing that. God has never really ever dropped the ball. Never can. And if you have walked away from him, it's because you were impatient. You were impatient. I'm looking forward to starting my new job. I am not looking forward, however, to waiting for the phone call or the email or the whatever might come. Because that's going to cause me anxiety. It's going to cause me a severity of anxiety. My prayer is that it happens faster rather than slower. And once I do finally get into this job, I will only at that stage be truly set free from evil men and imposters who wax worse, deceiving and being deceived. Only at that stage will I ever really truly be set free from licentious men. The thing that is the bane of my existence is still a threat. Only then will I ever really be really, truly free from the risk of suicide um, because it keeps on pursuing me. The death spells that come will be ineffective as at that date. So the sooner this day comes, the better. I am officially going to be free from incarceration. But like I said, in the run up to the, the risks are still going to be there. The spells, the, the force, the coercion. Corbella. Eh. Yeah, that's still going to be happening. But hold on, guys. My, my prayer is that if you're in your season of testing and you're listening to my testimony, don't you ever give up because the devil's voice is not more powerful than God's, but it can be clamorous and loud in a way that God's voice is not. The Lord speaks to you in a still, quiet, tranquil, God, transcendent voice of many waters type voice. While the devil speaks to you, Arasa, ka, dikadara, le, the drums and all different kinds of showy orchestra like tap dancing shoes and yeah, guitars that's how the devil speaks so you will be scared you will listen to your unemployment you will listen to your singlehood you will listen to a mistreatment you will listen to sabotage backstabbing betrayal jealous uh, jealousy that, uh, that that people is, are using to try and put you in your place when you don't need to be put in your place you will listen to that far more easier than god but remember and the Bible says that we must demolish arguments and every lofty pretension that exalts itself above the Most High and hold into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. You must always conquer the devil's noisy people and the devil's voices and his demons with the word of God. Then you will relax and talk sense into yourself. Do a YouTube video like me. Comfort your heart so that you can at least get through the day. Pass the day with God's word. Pass the day with God's word while you wait so that you will not faint, okay? Because the devil is a liar, guys. But he's a very loud liar. And it's a lot easier to listen to him than it is to God. Because God says, be patient and trust me. God is about delayed gratification instead of instant gratification. So you're going to have to wait a little longer for God, right? And in the time of you waiting, Satan will try to get you to commit suicide. He will try to get you to settle marry anything that comes take any job that comes hang out with any person that comes you will be tempted to respond to all the stimuli that's coming from outside that is obviously not of god just wait and also trust god to protect you from the stimuli that's coming into your space that's trying to force itself into your space just like with my cousin that's the only reason i even considered it in the first place i said i didn't want it and i was forced i already told you the story I did the time. I already communicated the the, the, the um, events encircling this particular situation. Sometimes So when they want to force you, that's when you must pray that God will make them do what my cousin did. Just ghost you. They will be the ones to manifest demons so badly that they will treat you like trash. They will cut you off. They will rescind an offer that they initially gave you. They will just walk away and you will be left on the phone and some hello, hello, anybody there, anybody there. That's your protection. When they force you, make them leave by fasting, praying. The Holy Spirit will ward them off. They like like a fumigation. They will just battle to go in. The ones battling forceful, they will leave you because the fire of the Holy Spirit in His presence, they will not be able to chill. They will not be able to sit in it. 
like with the case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the fire that keeps on getting increased is going to burn the soldiers of Nebuchadnezzar around to death, while Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in and of themselves are going to stay safe. So, when you are forced, just pray and fast and watch the person that was trying to force an agenda just disappear. I hope you've been edified. I hope this has blessed you. And I hope you have realized that um, if at all you're evil, it's not going to do anything for you. All you do is make people write music about you. All you do is cause people to lament, moan, groan, ask God, am I a fool for worshipping you? Why have you left me? And the Lord ultimately comes forward and says, I have never left you, neither forsaken you. Come to me, all of you, who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is a light. Go to God and nowhere else, but do not fear those who can kill the body and thereafter do nothing. Fear only God, who can also cast their souls into hell. Signing out.